Hello, my name is Louis and I am talking about things that is a little bit unusual for me to talk about. As in, I always do the spiritual stuff and I have done videos on talking about being a medium and spiritual techniques and psychic techniques and what have you but for now I'm gonna talk about something different it's quite close to my heart and it's a problem that I'm seeing all the time okay and that is anxiety oh yes the word anxiety panic attacks throw in a bit of depression with that well let me tell you a story uh, some time ago out of the blue I had this massive massive feeling that I couldn't breathe and I couldn't get any air through my nose I couldn't get it through my mouth my heart is pounding and I started hyperventilating and well one thing led to another and I started losing my vision and I'm already in a wheelchair so um, at this point I'm starting to feel very very afraid and if anybody knows me they know that I'll have a fight with a rhino it really doesn't worry me but since going into the chair um, I feel a lot more vulnerable than I ever used to be. So, getting back to this feelings of um, anxiousness and pure terror because I was currently phoning the doctor and I was talking to the doctor and trying to book an appointment about something. So, the doctor's number was the last number on my phone. So I um, was on the phone whilst I was listening to this automated message that these doctor surgeries seem to put up nowadays and it was going over and over and over again and I was finding I, w I was unable to concentrate, I couldn't hear the words on this automated message because I was starting to really struggle for breath and my vision started going and my heart is pounding so much it was hurting my whole chest um, it was terrifying absolutely terrifying um, so I finally get through to the doctors and the doctor answered the phone and very calmly this doctor said what's the matter with you what can I help you with now by this time my breathing is so difficult I couldn't get any deep breath I couldn't string no more than sort of four or five words without feeling like I was gonna think so I tell the doctor I can't breathe help me please the doctor says oh we have no available appointments uh, maybe phone tomorrow or something like that well that was a bit silly so that made me panic even more and it made me um, struggle for breath even more than I was before so I said again I was begging please can you help me I cannot breathe um, says the doctor well if you come back if you can make your way up the surgery at half past four in the afternoon bearing in mind this is nine in the morning and they will try to fit me in at half past four um i said to the doctor i don't think i'm gonna be alive by half past four because that is the state that was how i was feeling i could not breathe i could not see um, 
I was in such a bad state, I was so lightheaded, I could feel myself, you know, drifting in and out whilst I was on the phone. And the doctor said, Well, maybe pop yourself in a in a taxi and we'll try to fit you in about half past four. And I was begging. I was literally begging this doctor. I said, Look, what part of being disabled I'm in a chair now. What part of being disabled can't breathe, can't see, don't you understand? Please help me. And the doctor said, Oh, just pop yourself in a taxi and I'll see you at half past four. Okay. And put the phone down. Well, I'm in super panic mood now. I cannot breathe, I cannot see. Um, my heart is pounding even more so fast do, 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 so fast I could feel the pain of it pounding through my chest almost because that's what it felt like well I, I managed to wheel a couple of spaces because I just needed some air because I just could not breathe so I wheeled a couple of wheels paces forward and I fell out my chair because I passed out temporarily so I'm on the floor, gasping for breath, like a fish that's just been pulled out of the water. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm thinking, I'm going to die. This is it. This is the end. I'm going to die alone, disabled, unable to breathe. Nobody here to help me. Absolutely crazy. Well, luckily... My uh, wife came home for dinner and seen the state I was in and um, she managed to get me up and sort me out and I managed to get a f some breaths in that made me feel a bit better and the vision came back quite quickly after that, I started calming down, she was hugging me and holding me and you know the, the symptoms seemed to go quite fast after that but I don't want to make any bones about it I don't want to make light of this it was the most terrifying moment of my life I generally thought I was going to die now I'm a spirit medium or you could say I'm a psychic spiritual medium it makes no difference dealing with death hell 97% of my family is has passed away death is no stranger to me you know but this moment in time at that moment in time I have never been so terrified and scared in my life I'm a big man you know I, I, I still got a pair of arms on me even though my legs don't work I'm still strong a big man but I felt bullied I felt like I was abused, I felt let down and alone, definitely let down by my doctor's surgery, um, who never even thought, hey, this man can't breathe, he's disabled, maybe he needs help, let's call a paramedic, no, none of that. I was terrified and it's the most scariest moment of my life. And I've been in some scary situations, and this beats everyone. So, with that, I started calming down. My wife was there. I felt started to feel safe and feel a bit more normal again. But I was in shock, and I was scared. So, my wife took me straight up to the doctor. They'd done tests on my lungs, they'd done tests on my chest, my breathing, um, and they said, there's nothing wrong with you. You have good lungs. They said, key facts, you have 98% airflow. You have um, excellent lungs from playing the sax, maybe, um, excellent lungs you're a fit as a fiddle as part apart from being in a wheelchair and a few other problems that's with me um, everything's good and I felt better because 
somebody, a professional, has told me this, those facts that I'm okay and I can breathe, and it was just an anxiety attack or it was just a panic attack. Well, no. It's okay, it's just an anxiety or a panic attack. No, that don't work. No, no, no. Because automatically now, that doctor has given me a thing. It's given me uh, an excuse. It's given me um, an identification on a potential problem that could take years to sort out through you know, speaking to counsellors and psychologists to the medical route with drugs and we all know that doctors like to give you the happy pills well no I wasn't going to do this um, I wasn't going to go down any of those routes I'm going to try to find my own reasoning for why this happened and I will sort this out I made a promise to myself and when I make a promise, I mean it. I never back down from a promise. I've never um, negated on a promise. I've always done as I've said I would. My dad used to say, "Say it. My word is my bond," and I give him my word. I give you. I give myself my word that I'm going to sort this out. Well, I tried numerous uh, websites, numerous. Um, forums and they're all pretty much saying yeah medical go down the happy pill route or you can go and have counseling and pay an extortion amount of money for years upon end to listen to somebody listening to you talk about things that you already know what's going on um, I don't think it's particularly helpful sometimes it helps to talk to somebody but if you're going to pay a huge amount of money just for somebody to go mm-hmm mm-hmm okay mm-hmm and listen to you talk then that might be okay for you nah that's not for me and uh, bearing in mind most doctors get 150 pound per prescription that they hand out so they will hand you out these happy pills these make you feel better pills until the sun comes down wouldn't you? 150 pound a shot? <laughs> yeah okay so a couple of days later I decided to um, look into it even more I'm still feeling very shaken that's how badly it affected me I'm still feeling very shaken I even had to have my brother to phone me up every day to tell me I have 98% airflow and I could breathe I had to rely on my wife coming home it's just so I could run up, wheel up and hear her heartbeat because her heartbeat at the time was the only thing that I could possibly do to calm myself down. I was really shaken and in a bad way. Whew, so um, I figured well if my brother phoning up makes me feel better if the heartbeat from my wife makes you feel better um, I'm gonna to try to work with this and come up with something so this is what I done you know I just want to um, state that this worked for me and it worked for me very fast and it didn't cost anything just self-belief and know in here and in here that you're going to be okay you know so what I done was I was thinking about the heartbeat I went on to uh, YouTube let's just say the word I don't think I'm that important to be sued by anybody um, I went on to YouTube and then um, recorded a heartbeat and I put that on loop over again do 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 so I got that recording and then over the top 
I had um, me saying facts, facts I had from the doctor. And the doctor was said that you have 98% airflow. All the doctors said exactly the same thing. 98% airflow, fact, good and it's positive. There's nothing wrong with your lungs. Your lungs are healthy. Good, positive, fact. I then overlaid this on the heartbeat. So the heartbeat's playing and, you know, it was okay. And I've put in a couple of things like uh, you're relaxed, you're calm, you could breathe through your nose easily, all affirmative stuff. And, well, it worked. It worked fine for me. Um, I'm not saying it will work for everybody, but if you if you go through life listening to what everybody says to the word to the letter, you can end up falling into little traps and little problems. Now, when it comes to my problem that I had. The doctor said it's anxiety. You're clearly suffering from anxiety. You may suffer from panic attacks. So I've got anxiety and I've got panic attacks. None of those fits too good for me. I don't like the idea of having a thing. I don't like having something that you see and read all about that there don't seem to be a short term cure for that wasn't sitting well so that's why I did the recording of the heartbeat and I did the uh, the voice overlay over the top and I played it at night I played it every time I was feeling uneasy I had it on a spare phone you could use your an old mobile that has a recorder on it you can use a, a dictaphone. It, it, it doesn't make much difference. And I just popped in my ear when I was feeling panicky or if I feel like I was going to have some sort of episode or whatever, you, then I'll play it. And I would calm down almost instantly without the use of my wife being here to use her heartbeat. Um, I was being reinsured by... Um, the facts that the doctor has given me and I even had a visual aid um, this is a visual aid for me um, excuse the right hand you know doctor say I am fine my lungs are good 98% airflow I could breathe for the nose and all that you could breathe easily always now it's a bit of a tool it is could even say it's a crutch but I've only been leaning on that a little bit see this writing the amount of doctors that said I was fine after examination brilliant uh, my lungs are good and healthy 98% airflow these are all pos positive things and they're facts so I pop that in front of me so I look at that and I breathe I listen to what they're saying from the audio tapes that I've done so I'm hearing it and now I can see it and I know it because I was there when the doctor said it I'm hearing it now reaffirming in my ear and I can see it in front of me just in case I do forget so that works for me and the most important thing is get rid of the names anxiety panic attacks depression get rid of them don't call it by that you call it by that then you're hooked you have something you have a problem that's going to take lots of medication, lots of endless talking, lots of sitting there watching the therapist go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 
Mm -hmm. what, do you call, what do you think it calls this? What do you think is the core of your problem? Well, for a start, you go, uh-huh, 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 I'm paying you £200 an hour. You want to give me a little bit, some of it better than, uh-huh, okay? It's not going to happen, <laughs> okay? For me, it's not going to happen. And it don't have to happen for you either. I'm not saying that what I've done here is a fix for everybody. I'm just saying this worked for me. I changed the name. It was not anxiety. It wasn't panic attack. I had a blip. I had a funk. I had a thingy. Change it anything. Because these are things that says, oops, I dropped a ball. I'm okay, it's a ball, I dropped it. I've picked it up again, and I'm carrying on running. But if you call it a name, it's like playing football, playing rugby, and you, you drop the ball, and the whole team going, oh, you dropped the ball, you dropped the ball. Oh, you're useless, you're rubbish. You're afraid to pick up the ball. Don't be afraid. Because that is the only thing that would defeat you. It's fear fear that you have anxiety, a fear that you have breathing problems due to panic attacks, you know, it's easy for people to say, well, there's nothing wrong with you, you can, f you know, it's all in your head, yeah, it is all in your head, a lot of it is, but the problem is, when I was having these feelings, I couldn't breathe. My chest was tight. I could feel the pounding of my heart, and it hurt. A blind is a visual thing. So I was blind, I had pain in my chest, my heart is pounding, and I could not breathe. They're all physical sensations. A thought, well, that didn't do anything. You know it's true, you know you're okay, you know you're well. But a physical sensation out trumps a thought any day. So all I'm saying is, and I don't even know why I'm doing this, but, but I just thought this might help. Instead of you going straight to a psychiatrist or a counsellor or something like that, believe in yourself first. Um, you're all a lot stronger than you think you're a lot more powerful than you think I talk to people that's not there according to others I know they're there I can see them but just because I can see them and you can it doesn't make me a freak it doesn't make me um, anything other than who I, who I am and who I was born to be and the same goes with the people that can't see what I see. It makes no difference. It don't make you superior to me because you think I'm a freak. And it doesn't mean that you're stupid or there's something wrong with you because you can't see them. But whether you can do spiritual stuff and you're into spiritual things or you can run a thousand miles in under 10 minutes everyone's different everyone's unique but the one thing we're all united in is that we all fall from time to time we all have a blip we all have a problem from time to time and it's okay nothing to be afraid of it's nothing to be ashamed of your body is designed to heal that's what it's there for um, your mind your mind will mess around with you your mind's like a, a devious little irritating little brother you know you <laughs> it will make you say and think and do things and you believe it because that's your voice of conscience that's your that's your um, reassuring affirmative standard practice um thought form and when you tell yourself or seemingly tell yourself that you can't breathe oh you can't breathe but there's nothing physically wrong with you so first steps are 
for me uh, calm down you calm down straight away you try to think past the thoughts that you can't breathe and then you listen to that audio I could do you an audio that's not a problem if any of you need a one I can do one to you you give me a few little facts and I can overlay that onto the audio for you so for me it's the heartbeat calming down which you will I find instantly as soon as I hear the heartbeat after the, after you, you start getting your breath properly and you start calming down because that heartbeat will make you slow down and you start thinking more rationally when you're calm uh, after that know that you're breathing you are breathing and you are okay another little trick if you get uh, a square a draw on a piece of paper or something uh, you've got a square sort of thing rectangle in this case hi right. you put your finger on one corner okay you take a deep breath hold it back to the start and you do that combine that with the heartbeat sound and it focuses you and it makes you snap back into the moment that you can breathe and there's nothing to panic about and you're safe lots of other things happened when I had my blip but um, food was one of them I was afraid to eat food because I thought it would get stuck in my throat and I couldn't be able to breathe and the thought of that just made me panic so I couldn't even eat it was about two weeks before I could eat something properly and every time I thought about eating, it put me into another blip. So, using that audio technique and the square um, really helped me, and I hope it will help you too. All I'm saying is, just believe in yourself. You're much more powerful, and you're better than you think you are. Power is in within you. It's not in a pill. It's not in somebody going, uh huh, uh huh, mm hmm. None of that. The power to do anything is in you, is inside. Use what you got for as long as you've got it. And be well, okay? I don't know if this is helpful or not, but get an audio sound of a heartbeat get some facts that you know is true put them together just calm down and with luck you'll be just fine love and light you all my name is Louie and I'll be out bye bye